All right, folks, so after that last job I had, I had a lot of trial and error, good data points. Um, the biggest thing was my ball screws were clogged with shavings, a lot of it from past jobs that it just built up. And that's what led to a lot of my missteps, a lot of you know destroyed work pieces, and a lot of aggravation and a lot of extra time on my behalf out here. So to get to the root cause of that would be to cover up these um, ball screws. So you can see I've done some makeshift bellows here. Uh, that white part, that's actually just printer paper. And it held up for the duration of the job. It covered most of that ball screw that's behind it. Um, every now and then uh, some pieces would get on there and, or if I'd be vacuuming, I'd shake this, they might shake onto the ball screw and then I'd have to clean it off. But for the most part, it worked okay. Um, biggest caveat there was I wasn't running any type of coolant. So you can see it's got a little bit of grease on it over here. That's from the, the uh, way lube coming off of the ball screw itself. So it worked, but it is not pretty. It's duct taped on, um, but it got the job done. Uh, it kept the Z axis happy for that job. But tonight I wanna go ahead and fix that um, and make something a little more permanent. Um, I kicked around the idea of trying to make these a little more robust on the, um, on the Y axis, but I really just, I don't know. I just don't have any good ideas. <laughs> because there definitely was a time when I didn't really think it was that big of a concern and I was just running parts and I've got a picture of black plastic shavings just like filling up a trough. <laughs> so I think that's what did most of me in. Uh, there's tons of black plastic in those things but but yeah so I don't know maybe I'll pick my battles and just focus on the z-axis for tonight. Um, if I still am having issues with the x and the y later on maybe I'll attack that later. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, go on McMaster car, spend $20, $30 on some fancy rubber that's, you know, grease resistant and this and that, and I can cut it and run a piece from the bottom of my spindle over to the back of my saddle. And then my father-in-law said, well, what about that treadmill you had? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, what about the conveyor on there, or the belt on there? I was like, ah, that's a pretty good idea. Might not hold up to grease and oil as well, but it's free and there's a lot of it. Probably last me a year, <laughs> just replacing little pieces. So tonight, I'm gonna try and cut and fit a piece of this stuff on there and I think it'll probably hold up for quite a while. And so that will hopefully be my free solution. So I guess the first step is to disassemble your existing bellow. Ta-da! And throw it in the trash. All right, so now that we're working on a nice clean work surface, I actually should wipe that off. There's some shavings on it right now. I'm still seeing black plastic, it's everywhere. I've had this mill like apart at this point. That's black grease, not black plastic there. All right. So I think the idea that I'm going with is I'm gonna just tape it up here temporarily like I had the other one duct taped. Mainly just for now to, um, I don't know, get an idea of size and make sure this is actually gonna work. Later on, I think I'm gonna try and find like some half inch angle, like aluminum that'll stick out here, keep it all nice and rigid. And then I can just tap and drill and tap two holes in the bottom of the spindle. Mount it that way. I think that'll be pretty clean. Um, then on this end, I'm just hoping to just remove this piece down here and then um, just mount it on the existing holes for this piece on the saddle. So let's get her done. So this piece right here is about yeah, seven, a little over seven and three quarter inches wide. If we were to just stick with that, you know, it would be something that would go to about here. 
but I'd say if we cut a 10 inch wide, we can always cut it smaller. So maybe start with a 10 inch piece, 10 inch wide. Uh, and then I got my machine fired up just so I can kind of play with it a little bit and get it into different positions. So Y axis all the way forward would be the, be the longest we'd need it. So about there, and the Z's already all the way up. And we don't need it to go all the way down and then over like that. So we could probably shave a little bit off. We'll call it, I mean, 13 inches. It's right here. That's probably safe. So if we do like a 10 by 13, and then leave maybe, maybe another inch to mount on each end, half inch for each end. So we'll do 10 by 14. Let's cut that out. You can see my friend, the extension cord. Everywhere I go, there's extension cords, I swear. All right, 14 inches is right here. Ten inches is right here. If anyone can see that. Measure it right here too, ten inches. Okay. Guess I could have used the yardstick to measure it. Dang. That would have been clever. This, this uh, video is not sponsored by the Home Depot. All right, good enough. Let's cut her out. Man, if I can't see my lines, there's no way you can on the screen, I don't think. Hopefully I'm close. so weird I can see it perfectly until I go to cut it and then it's like it disappears it becomes just like a line in my imagination and I have to go from memory haha <laughs> there we go so that's pretty strong that's like a little tiny nub I still had and I couldn't even tear it there we go that's pretty square a rectangle. My daughters would correct me. All right, let's see how we did. See, we went, I was expecting 13. And honestly, we could have gone a lot longer. It's funny how that works. Yeah, if we want to connect up here, we're going to need to go longer. How does that go? Hold on. Yeah, from up here to here, even with that bend there, 13 inches is to the table. We gave it 14. Yep. And it doesn't seem long enough. Well, I guess it is if you do that. Oh, I guess because I'm mounting lower than the table. That's probably a lot of it. All right, take two. Let's add a few inches. So based on what we know, it looks like we need to add probably three to four inches. Let's measure. Maybe four for good measure. Eh. Let's do three. All right, scratch that. We're doing four. <laughs> we went from 14 inches, we we're gonna do 17. Well, this thing's 18 inches wide. 
So instead of cutting it this way, let's go this way. And then we only need to take 10 inches at a time. These scissors are starting to really not like this material. I think it's dulling it. Good thing they're not mine. Don't tell my wife. All right, let's see. Now it's huge. Yeah, we'll probably trim like an inch or so off of that, but that should get the job done. We can actually offset it a hair too. Actually, I kind of like the idea of mounting it forward like that instead of way back here. Because this way, it, and I'm having that, that C shape, because then, since I don't have anything up here, it kind of shields stuff from going this way. Take a heck of a um, chip to come up here over that and stick on there. So I think I might do that, mount it as close to the spindle in the front as I can. So now, before I start really dialing this in, I want to just tape it on and run my machine through its two, ex like it's already at one extreme. Now I want to bring it down and, and back and see what that looks like. I guess I don't even need to tape it. Let's just run the thing. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> pretty far down right there like I would well I guess I have some tools that would run that low like let's grab well maybe not this is probably about my smallest it's still definitely possible though you know we got a plan for that all right so now we might run into problems because this would be all sorts of bunched up if we ran it like that in real life And I guess it could do that and be okay, like a snake. And then you could actually run the Y axis back. Yeah, it's definitely pushing it. We'll have to cut some off for sure. Hmm. Darn, it just seems so nice and easy. I'm just going to tape it in place and see what we get. Well, first we get tape that doesn't stick. That's how good this stuff is. Nothing's going to stick to it. It's going to make me have to actually like legit mount it with a bolt and a washer. Let's try a new piece of tape. Why is it gotta be so difficult? Had one of those days where I just feel like everything I try to do is fighting me, so that's why I feel whiny tonight.
See, to me that looks actually pretty sick, but we can't have it getting all bunched up on itself either. Stay on there, tape, or I'll have to tape you to more tape. Ah. Sometimes you have to tape your tape on. It's okay though, we have lots of tape. Oh my gosh, this tape isn't sticking either. Maybe it needs more tape. All right. That's all the way down. So that would actually technically work. I mean, you might have trouble with like work holding and stuff like that if you had a vice on there, but I mean, but if you had a vice on there, you wouldn't be this low anyway. So, I mean, I'd probably still trim it down a little bit just so that when you're at the very top, it's a lot tighter instead of having all that slack. But I think overall that should work. But I guess another thing I am seeing is that paper and stuff holds on here really nicely with duct tape, but this stuff does not very well. So I will be getting some angle like coming up here ASAP before I really run this mill again to mount that. And then I'll mount it in the bottom in the existing holes. And we'll call this project done pleat for now. From the backside here, you can kind of see the amount of overhang I've got with the uh, ball screw. It's about, I don't know, two inch overhang. So it should keep all the stuff off of it, which I can actually see little specks of junk on it right now. It's like there's always something. Yep, yeah, little flexes. Or little specks of, that looks like metal. That's no bueno. Hasn't run metal in a long time. That just means it's disintegrating, right? That's plastic. There's all sorts of junk on there. I need to clean it again. I shouldn't be running up and down apparently. But it's always messy and you always got to keep it clean. If you don't keep it clean, it'll destroy itself. So yeah, I think that will be the mock-up. Um, sorry, I didn't get it all the way done tonight, but I need to get some more supplies it looks like. And then we will get this sucker knocked out. Um, I know you guys are probably by now going, when is that guy going to clean that mess up? Um, pretty much there's another big deal coming to the electronics because the root cause of all the stalls and everything was the nasty ball nuts full of chips that I'm fixing with this. But the symptoms that I saw of destroying everything, all my parts, all my time, everything else was because my steppers didn't have any feedback to tell the computer, hey, I missed some steps, stop. So I've got closed loop steppers and I've actually got them sitting here in a box that I'm gonna do a video on. Um, so that'll be coming up. Um, but that takes new drivers and everything. So pretty much that board's getting redone. Um, might consider, I don't know. I would say I'm gonna put it in a nice enclosure, but I'm totally not, I'm a cheapskate. So, so I'll, I'll keep it running like that um, for now. Just change out the drivers on it, clean up all the wiring. And I gotta mount my little, that's what I'm using for my spindle speed control right now. So just that little L298N board and the uh, little homemade circuit I made. So, so yeah, it's a mess, but it'll get cleaned up. It's gonna get worse before it gets better though. All right, so that's about it for this week. Um, this looks like it will totally help out, so I'm excited about it. It looks looks promising. So yeah, we'll uh, finish this up, and I'll, I'll show you the finished result here um, probably coming up. I know it's like scatterbrained. It's one week spindle control, one week bellows, one week MR2 or whatever. I wish it was MR2. It needs to be MR2, yeah. So, uh, you know, but sorry, it's just a balancing act. I got a busy life, it seems like, and. It seems like right when I really dive into something, then I get a job and I got to cobble it all together to get my mill somewhat running so I can get a job out the door. But it's tough to complain about that because then it's like, ooh, I got more money for upgrades and stuff. And then I got to do an upgrade and, you know, middle of it, another job comes along. So, so it's a balancing act. I didn't think I'd have that problem. Never in, never in my mild, 
Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought I'd have had that problem. So, so it's a good problem to have. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Hopefully this will solve my, my problems with all the debris and crap in there. Um, if not, I'll have to figure out something a little more substantial and maybe something for the X and the Y axis, but fingers crossed this will be good enough. Have a good one.